Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. This is the Tuesday teaching day and we've got lots of fiber to get through. I let me go to the full face here. There we go. I spent the last week going through some of my fiber as far as what's immediately available right here downstairs and especially because there was a lot around from the 52 weeks of sheep and that's all over with and I had gone through the breed file I got that all updated I was ready to store that away and I ended up with little odds bits and pieces and about well eight breeds that I had fiber for I had never done a breed review and that sort of thing hang on a minute I need to click another button just a minute sorry I wasn't really ready here now I'm ready anyway so these few that are left over from the breed review I had said originally that I wouldn't do a breed review again on Teaching Tuesdays because it really is very similar and yet what is happening in my real life you know my non-streaming life is that the only spinning time the two-hour chunks of streaming are just like golden for getting spinning done and so for that reason I am going to go ahead and devote this teaching stream to some Welsh breed sheep and talk about them. I have a lot of them already prepped so you won't have to see the prep over and over and over but I will be spinning the fiber talking about the fiber as I'm working with it. I have links for the sheep. I hope you go look at them. It's always fun to look at the sheep. I'll encourage you to do that. I have four breeds to do out of uh, what's left over from the 52 weeks of sheep and I'll go into that now so now let's go to the table table of fiber there we go and this little tag right here says Welsh breed experience it is what came with all of the 15 gram samples of fiber from Witchwood and I need to go ahead and put her little let's see if this works her link she's an Etsy store there you go um, you can always go and check her out there every one of the ones that I will be doing today is from her I may repost that link um, as we go on in case it disappears because I want to have you understand that this is not something that you can go and get in your local source of fiber it's an unusual thing the Welsh breed and obviously it's from Wales it's old sheep that uh, old sheep breed not old sheep old sheep breed that have been around for a while and she very nicely put together a pack of these different um, breeds so let's see here I'm gonna read these I'm sure I'm not gonna pronounce everything right but we have Brecknock Hill Cheviot Welsh Mountain Black Welsh Mountain Slain Beulah Speckled Face Lewinog Baywin Bellwen. I'm going to say it like it looks, like it's spelled B A L W E N. Hill Radner, Carrie Hill, and Badgerface. And I have already done, as part of the 52 Weeks of Sheep, all but four of these. Okay. And I've also been working on releasing some podcasts about the ones that I've done. So what I am left with here today. Is the last four of those breeds three are white one is a dark black it's um, very much like a black Welsh Mountain and when I do my breed reviews when I do a breed study um, lately originally what I was doing was making up 
sheets of uh, information having some of the fiber saved um, in these plastic photo sheets uh, clipping these all together and putting them together in a file box in fact you can look back there behind me and underneath that big basket of fiber there is one of the two breed boxes I have two of them they are full so now that I am not really doing official uh, breed studies anymore especially for the podcast and things like that I am going to no longer make those big sheets and I'm going to a different format I am going to be collecting these little bags of um, same snack size right put a little bit of the sample in there I'm going to be making an information card that looks like this and of course the name goes in there so you know I have con condensed the breed study I still want to keep this information I want a little bit of the fiber fortunately all the fiber I got from her was washed I ran into one and it wasn't part of this Welsh breed it was part of a down breed study it was so sticky I, I have to rewash it and it's sitting in my wash basket um, waiting to have some hot water it's only 15 grams it's only going to take a real quick time to wash it but I I want to be um, working on something else too and not just wash that so it's been really good fiber to work with it's usually ready to process it does look like off the sheep and um, washed and this is right here a very good example what it looks like straight out of the bag and you'll see some of the others okay so this particular breed that we're starting with is the Beulah and on here it is um, Beulah speckled faced and I'm going to go copy the link give me a minute here where there you are all of these links come from the Oklahoma um, state education they have a wonderful web page that I mean it's not just sheep it is goats and cattle and horses information on all these breeds it is an excellent source so once you use this source um, you know or hit the link you can bookmark this um, web page and you can go and get anything uh, information on any breed of animal really okay Beulah well sheep info and there we go all right so click on that link and go take a look at the sheep it's pretty it's cute I mean I, I would like sheep for not having ever raised sheep or been around them or anything I'm in love with sheep <laughs> and it, it obviously I think is all because of what I have done over all these years with the fiber all right what I did was when I first get a sample like this I look for lock intact locks I look to see am I going to get this like this and pull it out and have that and the answer was yes in this there was a lot um, well about half there was maybe half um, and these are long and when I first saw how long this was I was like I'm not sure that's going to card well but it turned out it carded really nice I made three hand card bats here so these are little mini bats that I will split one of them and spin one and a half per single and that'll give me my carded two ply for the sample and um, let me finish this and then these locks being so long I'm just going to use a dog comb and get my fiber to comb it so I haven't done any of the combing today whether I use my handheld combs on the fiber or um, the dog comb combing the locks I haven't done any of that today one of the reasons I picked that is because it is quieter the hand cards are noisy and I had recorded a previous breed study that I wanted to use for a podcast and I was listening to how noisy it's a crunch 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 you know 
<laughs> as you scrape those cards together. So I decided that I would try and card as much as I could. I have one fiber I haven't carded. So we are going to have a little bit of carding noise in the this stream. So anyway, I'm, I will look for the intact locks. And everything I have here, I am going to... Um, use for top. I've already done what I'm going to do for my carded woolen and so I am just kind of pulling these out putting them together but if I have and there are short bits in there that go in the trash if I have anything that isn't really an attack lock I can just load it on the comb after I've opened it up. That's what this is like and this is what I do before I card. It's called picking and you just take your fiber and you pull it apart. There's a lock. And none of this, well that might have been a lock. Let me look at this a little closer. Not really. See the lock can't be that thin. You're not going to be able to spin that kind of uh, thin lock really. This is good. And the test is, is in an attack lock is you can grab the end, pull it out of there, and you can do this. All right, so that's the staple length of the fiber. I need to hold that that way. That, that's the staple length of the fiber, right? It's very long stapled. And these little ones that may be kind of narrow, I can go ahead and combine when I am combing them with the dog comb. Now this um, reason for doing this, the carding and the combing, is to see whether the staple length and the way the fiber feels, the next to the skin, uh, you know, softness of the fiber, it will help me determine whether it behaves better makes a yarn I like better if it's carded or combed and I can only do that if I make the yarn. So all of the breed study has been based on doing that to determine which breeds are better carded, spun woolen, which breeds are better combed, spun worsted, they spin better um, thin or whatever. Uh, so that is the reason for doing the carded and the combing for each one. I had something else I wanted to talk about. Um, hmm, maybe I'll think about it. Oh, I know. To finish up, what am I going to do with my little packet here? You know, I don't have the sheet to put the twist in. So I, uh, I am going to make a little twist of carded and a little twist of combed. But the rest of it, I'm going to wrap up, whatever I get out of this 15 grams, I'm going to wrap up into a ball. And it is going into my massive collection of different breeds of sheep, little balls, what's left, that I am going to make Christmas ornaments out of. And right now, I already have two paper grocery sacks full, almost full, of these little balls. I, I have stored those and I am currently collecting the other ones in a basket here and I have it sitting up there. So you know it has this one doing this this way will give me more. This particular uh, four breeds I might end up doing something bigger with. Um, you know I don't know but I will have a little bit more. All right, so just to get it out of the way so that I can uh, do the combing, I am going to have, do the um, carded and spin it. And my information is getting written on this little piece of paper that will go in that Ziploc bag. And right now, I made the comment that it looks like Icelandic, and yet it doesn't have the tog. It's not a dual coat. And when I say it looks like Icelandic, what I really am talking about is the fact that it's got this 
open, wavy crimp. I mean, it just, it isn't tightly crimped, right? That wave, if you, that was a sound wave, it would be very, very, whatever, you know. It is. It's very um, open and spaced far apart. So it's open crimped. That's what I call. And when I have um, Icelandic in the past, I have felt like that it, in the lock is also very open crimped. It changes after you take the separate the tog and thel, and that's not true with this. This one stays this way, um, you know, throughout the whole um, processing until you finally get it in bats or top, and then of course you no longer see the lock, but you can see the crimp, or it's going to affect the way the yarn looks and feels because it is such an open crimped as opposed to let's say merino or cormo which you know the crimps are like crammed on top of each other they're so close big difference isn't necessarily softness bit uh difference because this is pretty soft really it is a, a springy and so if you spin an open crimped lock and it it comes up to 14 reps per inch in a two ply when you wash it it's probably going to stay very close to that 14 it might go to 13 but it'll stay very close to that however if you have a merino and you are um if if you have a merino with that really really close crimp and you spin a 14 wraps per two ply and you wash it you're going to probably end up with 11 or 12 because it's it's that you know it doesn't it it springs bigger right it doesn't spring tighter it springs bigger and relaxes and and that all that crimp kind of straightens out and you got longer thicker is what makes merino what we don't like and that is a yarn that changes when you wash it okay so i have a bat and a half here let's just really quickly spin this and let me get my here we go this like i said it's not interesting to look at spinning however as I work with fiber, I do tend to make comments and everything, and so, you know, you'll get the benefit of that. Now, the very first thing I can see in this is the fact that even in a bat, it is long stapled. I can pull it way out. And because this was a really nice sample and there weren't shortcuts, I am getting a extremely thick thin for woolen spinning yarn and it actually probably there's a little bit of a thickness but it actually probably would draft your typical long draw i did not get it to do it there it it thinned out too much so i am going to go the uh semi uh long draw you know where I'm not really pulling out far. I am just keeping my hand near the orifice and pulling away from the fiber supply, letting the twist run all the way to the fiber supply. This is semi woolen spinning. I spin it a lot, especially in these samples, these carded samples. When I have this is an awesome sample. Um, because there are no bumps. So I'm going to get a really nice, smooth, uh, semi-woolen yarn. And I need to write that on my notes because that's exactly the reason I am doing that. Now I have a, a bump there from a nub, nib, or whatever. There we go. I got it. So let's try and get this going again here. You notice I am not spinning. The Roberta always has a fair amount of pull in, but I am not spinning fast um, at all. I don't want to be 
pushing myself to get that fiber into the twist and in the fiber supply. Now I have just a little bit of the tips, which makes <laughs> I see that in this kind of lock where it goes down to a really fine tip point. Sometimes the tips stay in there. They don't get, well they do when you cart it anyway, but they don't really open up right and they kind of look like little tiny curly cues in the yarn it's there's not enough of it to be a design element uh you can't really plan on it but it's there all right so we have the end of those that bat and a half now this is also sticky which you never really catch until you are spinning it and then all of a sudden you notice oh my gosh my my fingers are like sticky and that's leftover lanolin even though it's been washed that's leftover lanolin so let's see here um bats very nice to spin semi woolen no bumps um slightly sticky i'm going to change and i know i have said it in the past and if you watch any of these you've heard me say it over each time I've done breed studies, but I do use um, the Roberta for this because of the quick change bobbins and everything. Oops, I'm gonna lose some of my good fiber here. Don't wanna lose that lock. It's sticking to me everywhere. <laughs> and that's not static. It's um, just that little bit of sticky. I also will mention that these this is bats made by hand cards and often locks that long are hard to card on my hand cards. It is too long. It hangs over. It will card better on my drum carter, which is a bigger drum and so it goes around a bigger area. But these in spite of being this length actually carded way better than I thought they would. Um, it surprised me that it did. And yeah, I'm getting a little you know, thick and thin. This is, you know, it can be really bad when I'm on some of my bats that have just endless shortcuts in it. You end up with a very bumpy yarn. It's a little better than that. But it's just almost too sticky to draft well. And I didn't catch that. It didn't feel like that as I even as I was carding it. But so what that means is maybe I should have made um, half of this into a bat and made a more open bat, not put so much fiber on there. That may be uh, one of the solutions that would have helped. And then I think it might have drafted a lot better. I just put too much fiber in those bats. I'm in a hurry. I shouldn't do that. Okay, so a bat and a half, of course, spins up really quick. And it looks thin when you're spinning it, but it really, it's not going to be that thin once you apply it.
There is a fuzziness to the yarn that's not uncommon with the oh uh, woolen spinning. Get this going here. No, don't attach yet. And we're just going to apply this. And now, now when I apply, I do need more pull in and I need a little more speed. You can see, I don't know if you can see, it is, it's really fuzzy. But it feels pretty good, uh, except for being sticky. It's soft and feels pretty good. This is Beulah, Welsh breed sheep, called Speckled Face, and it definitely has a cute face. Check out the picture. The second thing is, and you know what, that's the, the problem with the video on demand. I don't think the links work then. Um, maybe you can copy and paste into your browser. Ends up being more there than you think, you know? <laughs> okay, that's the end of that right there. That's the end of that one. I will need my scissors at hand. And I assume I'm almost to the end here also. Oh, yeah, right there. Perfect. Hard to tell when you have a white leader and you're spinning white yarn. Uh, where exactly it attached. All right. Let's take a look at this yarn. I like it on the bobbin. We have just, you know what? It's wool. It's two ply sheep wool. <laughs> nice, fuzzy, not fat, and actually not bouncy. There's just no bounce to that at all. That's because of the really open crimp. So I am going to put the name in here. I gotta figure out how to put carded. Oh, I want to measure wraps per inch too. That's another part of this. All right, on the back of this card, I am going to put those particulars carded. Uh, Apply, no bounce, and let's see here. I'm gonna get going right there. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve wraps per inch. And, you know, it might go down to 11 when I wash it, but I can be pretty sure that it'll stay in that range. So let me do a twist to save. And... I want to do this. Tie it together and put a card on it somehow. Uh, 
I live with these. I mean, I use these index cards all the time hard. Keep so many records because I cannot look at wool and say, oh yeah, that's such and such. <laughs> I can if it's dyed and I remember, you know, spinning it. But what we're going to do is Beulah. Carded. 12 reps per inch. And I'm going to put a hole in here. This is the part that takes time. I worked yesterday for three hours in here. I was doing some other stuff, but it wasn't spinning stuff. But still, I really only got two breed reviews like this done in the three hours. Um, part of that was because I was sorting out in the old files looking for previous, and that takes some time. There's a lot to go through. Okay. There. It's labeled. And I have a nice little twist. And the rest I'm just going to uh, put around a card of its name and put it in my little basket. Now when I'm doing these Christmas ornaments, I'm very much likely to put the carded and comb together in the same or ornament. I am not worried about that in those ornaments. Just the breed. Beulah. Carded. Alright. Okay, now we're going to take our um, dog comb and comb these locks and lock spin them. Oop. Almost forgot to put the card on there. All right. So I said you can take multiple ones and put them together and what you really want to do is make sure your tip end is together and your other end together of course cut in and it is it's just like combing hair and I don't comb the middle I comb the two ends and I'm going to lay these with uh, tips facing all the same direction. I love spinning by the lock. I don't mind doing this. Um, the longer the lock, the better. I won't do it on real short locks. So, you know, they have to have this length that this has in order to really qualify. It makes that little bit of discoloration. It's still there, but it pretty much disappears and becomes irrelevant. That's the kind of lock I like. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of spinning right there. <laughs> Oh, and I am. It, nothing really is falling out of this, fortunately, but I am combing right over my fiber, so that's probably not a good idea. This is very clean. Yeah, very nice fiber. No shortcuts. Hardly any vet, really hardly any vegetable matter. Um, 
Must have been a tidy sheep. <laughs> Not an ornery sheep that likes to go exploring. <laughs> tidy sheep. I think I like that. That could even be a good online name, huh? <laughs> You're welcome. What you're getting out of the bottom is is considered shortcuts. See there? Um, it's just inevitable from the shearing process. Uh, you don't get under that, in that area between the end of the lock and the sheep's skin, of course, is quite probably matted a little bit and quite thick to get through. and. So, you know, you'd, shearers do the best they can. They just zip it off and they're going for speed, too. They got a lot of work. And so, you know, I'm not going to complain about that. We can take care of that. We don't have to have it in our yard. So, I notice that I use we all the time, or you. I think that is the royal we and the royal you. But, you know, I'm not saying. I'm including you. Now this here, there are really no intact locks in that. And I'm just going to load the comb with it um, and do some with the comb. So we're going to do both. So these are the... Well, you don't see them in the camera. They're not in the camera yet. These are the comb locks. These I'm going to probably only do one top with. And it's okay with me to combine lock spun and comb top. I don't have a problem with that being in the same yarn. I have in the past um, separated the two. I've had more sample to work with when I've done that and more intact locks. However, it's really not that important. They, you're going to get pretty much the same looking yarn whether you're spinning. Okay, the one thing that is interesting that I need to note is this is the length, because of the length of the lock, um, the combed, um, not all transfers. And that means something to me. That means that I am not going, I'm going to have to pull off of each comb. I can't pull off of just one comb. And that's what it means. Now, the second one is always less and so it looks like hardly anything, but it's still worth pulling a lot of times a little bit. And then the first one, and I'm only doing this one time, you notice, um, partly because of time and partly just, it really isn't needing it. Um, I'll pull this off here. And what's left, I don't keep. So, we can put these back over here, and you can see that what I pulled off, I, I got a little thick area right there. That's a tip of the lock, and that's what happens. It's not uh, combing completely, completely good. All right, so let's spin some of this. And I want to notate on here that uh, one combing and then dog comb one locks. The 
one thing I do not worry about in any of this is measuring yardage. That is irrelevant and almost ridiculously don't need because of the small amount of sample. Um, when I spin a large amount of stuff, you know, I of course I'm interested in yardage um, that I'm getting out of the fiber supply, but not for a breed study. here. I don't think I need any of the other stuff on here as far as notes. Um, it's stuff laying everywhere. Let's spin this little bit of top first. Oh, that's sort of what I have to do. I have to eyeball how much each single gets and that really truly is hard to do. <laughs> it really is very hard to do. Okay, we're going to we're going to try that and see. Yeah. This needs less pull in. And my camera on there. Don't have the camera on it. There we go. Sort of. This again, just like the oh, semi woolen is a very long drafting zone. Um, the difference is I'm not allowing the I am spinning worsted. And I'm not allowing the twist to pass this pinch point of my thumb and first finger. Okay, and I'm smoothing after the as I go down allowing the twist to go into a very straightened and smooth fiber supply that's what makes the difference between woolen and worsted and this is worsted worsted is always uh, usually comb from uh, top combed locks whatever uh, just because you're presenting the fiber in a straightened out format to begin with when you use those preps. All right, so now we're just going to spin locks. I always start at the cut end and that's where that little bit of discoloration really helps me know where exactly I'm, uh, you know, which end is which. And in this particular case, um, it's it's pretty typical lock spinning and the difference the very very slight difference that you're going to see between spinning a lock and spinning top is you can get a little bit more fuzziness spinning a lock that's you know still going to be a very smooth down worsted yarn you still have a longer drafting zone but not quite as long because you don't want to disconnect from that lock and you're just feeding across the lock as you go so it's a pull and slide motion you join back in the back behind from one of the corners of the lock cut end and you just spin Pull and spin, feeding across the lock. And it is taking me too long to do even one. <laughs> I'm going to do the black one next. If I don't get to the other two, it's fine. They're white. They look very similar. I, you know, I have the carding done. I don't have the combing done. I'll do it later on my own time. But I am going to be on for two hours, so. I had to hurry last Tuesday. I don't have to hurry this Tuesday.
every step of this seems like it doesn't take a lot of time. It's just, I think, because there's a lot of steps. <laughs> single go on. Another bobbin for the rest of these dog comb blocks. Now I started the other one with a top and now that's a little easier. When you're starting out from scratch on a lock, it's a little tricky, a little fiddly. You'll get the feel for it though. Just folding over that corner and start drafting. I may be spinning this a little bit too fast, but it's so much easier to draft than the bat was. So, you know, I don't need to go as slow as I was. And the fast and slow determines really the amount of twist I get, and therefore I can over spin it, over twist it if I go too fast. Mind the camera? Pretty much. Maybe I don't need this. It was, I was, well, with the dark, I always wear dark pants and they really show the dirt that falls out of the fiber when I was picking it apart. But maybe you can see better if I have the towel off of there. And if you goof and you spin the wrong end, it don't matter. It really doesn't. It's just the cut end is always so much more open and flared out, and it's easier to do your join. And the tip end sometimes isn't completely combed open, and yet when you get down to it uh, with the twist entering it, you're able to guide that tip in so that it doesn't stick out. And it goes so fast. Of course, I didn't have that many, but it does go fast. Almost. I mean, it's almost like a long draw. It is the longest drafting zone I have ever used on locks, really. I probably have said that for other things, but it really is a very long staple. Looks like I may have had a little bit more in this one than the other. It didn't come out even. We'll see. As far as plying the two singles together.
Okay, that's it. And we'll play it. Going the opposite direction, of course. Which is, for me is a flip of a switch. So I have all this end stuff that just doesn't look like it's twisted at all, and it, the truth is, it's not. <laughs> For some reason, it's very difficult to get twist to continue all the way to the end of your fiber. Um, what you have to do is just start your plying with sort of open fiber. I think I have to oil these uprights. My goodness, they're pulling hard. I don't ply very often from these two uprights. It's very convenient, but it's not the best way to ply. Um, you really do want some distance between your um, point of contact of the twist and your single. And you get that by putting it a distance away on a uh, something that holds each bobbin, and preferably on either side of you. So, you know, since these are sample yarns, I don't bother with that, and this is very convenient. Uh, I don't have to worry about having the two lazy cakes out and getting the yarn on there and all that. All right, so, yeah, I do have more on the one bobbin than the other. Let me see how much here. And I do that by wrapping it around my fingers. And it may not, nope, it's not much. Not much at all. Not even sure it's worth saving, but we'll try. Just overlap. I have a thick area. I may have tails hanging out. I'm not worried about it. Like I said, I mean, it's the very end of this. So, not something I need. I will wrap my ball first and put that in the ball and probably cut it off and throw it away. But right now, I don't have to throw it away. So let me say something about the spinning here. Um, and count the wraps per inch. It spins nice as top or locks. And I'm going to wrap a little bit of this off and get past this join. And it is thinner, okay? It's fuzzy. It's actually loosely plied. I could have plied that a little better. It's kind of loose ply. Probably that, I mean, that is probably because I was, um, it was going too fast. And I just wasn't, I was feeding it in too fast. I wasn't letting enough twist go in. So let's count the wraps per inch here. But having said that, I do have a I do have um, an active twist showing up in the two ply. One, two, three, four, five. Thirteen. Oops. Lost my ball. Thirteen wraps per inch. And it looks thinner because it's smoother. 
you know, the carded was 12 wraps per inch. The carded was 12 wraps per inch, and it's totally uh, very th um, similar, but looks thicker because it was um, woolen, semi-woolen spun. All right, this is my ball, and I think I'm going to put it, just attach it here with this one. Yeah, I, I'll make my own, make a new one. another one for the twist. Cut and paste, well no paste, but cut and print. I do notice that the um, color is not very white. It's uh, um, typical, you know, where it goes that off white. Excuse me, I got I lost my ball of yarn here. Ugh. There we go. Yeah, you heard that groan, didn't you? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> There's my twist. Okay, so <laughs> this little baggie is one braid study, the Beulah Speckled Face Sheet, and we are going to go on to something else here. After I get a little bit of cleaning up to, boy, I make a mess when I'm working. Not a mess, just stuff everywhere. Everywhere. Oops, I forgot to put that in the bag. I'll put the information in there. All right. Now everything's in the bag. And we'll get back here. Okay, so the next one is still a Welsh breed and it is called Balewen, B-A-L-W-E-N. I told you it looks like Black Welsh Mountain and it does. That's what it looks like. Feels like it too, uh, sadly, because it's not soft at all. Not at all. Okay. Let me get a drink and get comfortable again here. Looks brown on there. which is very true of the black sheep. may have to move my table. I'm kind of at my max angle there on the... Now, this could be a real problem. It, it really... I may not spin this. since I'm not really required to <laughs> for the year. I can card it. I cannot comb this. Okay, first of all, there's no intact locks. It's just clumps of fiber like this. Fair amount of dirt in there, but it's real clean because it's going to be a very low lanolin fleece. 
and you're going to have this kind of situation where the more you pull it apart, the shorter everything gets. But it's still good to pull it apart. These right here, that white, that's Kemp. That is not hay or vegetable matter or anything. That is a sheep hair, and it's called Kemp. It's extremely stiff and obvious, right? That's probably the smallest Kemp I've ever seen, really. Uh, usually Kemp is, is long, but you've got very short fiber here, so you're going to have very short Kemp. So I'm not going to try and card this at all. I mean, comb it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to try and comb this at all. Let me get a card started here. And let me put the information on. You'd like to see the sheep, wouldn't you? All right. Hang on a minute. I'm going to find it, copy it. I have it up on my browser right there. They call it Bowen Welsh Mountain Sheep. And that's not right. B A. Yeah, it is. It looks. Oh, I have a W in there. I have an N in there. I have the. Okay, there. That's right. There we go. Watch the magic happen here. Oh, I don't need to, because I just said Welsh breed. All right, so I don't need to change that. All right, this also was from that fiber source up there, uh, Witchwood Spinner. So, same thing. And the sheep breed, as I said, just feels very, very similar to Black Welsh Mountain, which, hello, it's a Welsh breed. Black Welsh Mountain is a Welsh breed. You know, sheep genetics, you're going to breed with what you can find. Uh, I'm assuming, the, and I maybe shouldn't assume, but I feel like these are mostly uh, purebred or have kept the lineage uh, genetics as pure as possible so that when she says, I am sending you fiber from the Bowen sheep, you know, it's genetically very close to a Bowen, if not 100%. But standard sheep breeders, raising the flock, not necessarily to keep the genetics going, but just I need a ram uh, to breed with my ewes, and I need lambs to sell at the market, and they're not worried about, you know, keeping the genetics pure. You get a lot of mixture. Okay, so you've got... Uh, Bowen and Black Welsh Mountain, very similar looking sheep. I imagine they got used quite a bit. And that kind of thing eventually introduces all the genetics from the one breed into the other breed, and they seem very similar. So I have found, as I've done this for years and years and years, the breed study, I have found that what has happened is the there are just kind of like basic types. And of course, I'm not the only one that found this. They divide the types in the breed books um, that you have for spinners, right? As down breeds and long wool breeds and the soft uh, merino type breeds. Um, you understand what I'm saying. The genetics have basic differences between these groupings that they have put together in the book of different breeds. So I have reached the point where I can pretty much say, oh, okay, that's a long wool. You know, that's uh, Merino style. Um, you get into gray areas, you know, the, the Shetland is its own and Jacob. There, I mean, there are distinct 
qualities to those that's a little hard to categorize and sometimes there's a miscellaneous category in these breed books um, but there are basics that you can tell and this is one particular case where I can tell this is a Welsh breed it not because it's not soft not because it's black but because it's not soft and because it's black <laughs> I know I just contradicted myself the truth is it when I pick it up and handle it I have a fairly good idea of what breed now the one that fooled me is the one that's called a down breed and the down breed is because it's not the down undercoat and so it's not a dual coated necessarily or and you're using the undercoat for the down breed it's a location it's a location in the Britain that you know are called the downs and all those sheep that are raised in the area are the down breeds so that one I learned doing these breed studies this year and that's like South Down and yeah you know, all of different kinds that have the word down in them and it was like oh okay I'm not gonna be able to tell uh, what that is just by feeling it or by characteristics of the fiber it's a location thing all right so we're gonna have lots of oh you can't see that lots of stuff falling out of it we're gonna have lots of really short bits of fiber and that is what is making this fiber so prickly um, there's just no way to get that out of there and it you know the, the sheep must grow a whole bunch of various little um, lengths of fiber on their coat because it comes off the sheep that way with you know shorter longer very very short bits that you can't even get into um, your processing unless you just completely cart it into your fiber I may not do more than two bats of this with my hand cards and take the rest and card it on my drum carter I currently am carding dark colors and um, that's one thing I do uh, go back and forth with uh, light colors dark colors maybe um, dyed colors right on my drum carter um, I will always start with the light when I have a batch of carding to do I will always start with my whites and light colors I may do if I have any dye to do lately I haven't had any that were being drum carded I've been combing those but then I end with this very dark and that's what I've been doing I have one more to do and I, I have said this in multiple streams I cannot get back to that but now I'm glad I waited because I'm going to draw drum card one bat out of the rest of this and spin it up just to complete it and this is the thing that's been driving me crazy I end up with those kind of bats where I will put the yarn into my breed study ornament project right or I may use the yarn for maybe a little bit of a color on some other thing I'm knitting where I just need a little yarn but I don't want to throw the fiber away and I end up with 10 12 15 yards at the most of two ply so let me start my card here this is Bowen it's from which wood it is black it was washed and of course it says reminds me of BWM that's Black Welsh Mountain I don't have to write everything I know what I mean everybody knows pretty much what that means um, very short lots of dust it's not even vegetable matter little bit of Kemp and what else do I want to say no locks no locks carded all all right 
that's pretty much what I want to say on that. And I'm going to go ahead and make make some noise here with my hand cards. Let me get the first thing is doffing off what I did earlier as much as I can so I don't have that white blending in with the black. I have a nice little brush that cleans off hand cards like this. I didn't bring it in here. It's out with my drum carter. It's very nice though. It really gets down into those teeth and cleans them out good. Okay, now, let's see, you can see there was quite a bit in there. <clears throat> Not getting it all. All right, let me move here and put my towel back down. You load your cards like this. Just put that fiber right on there. Of course, I have opened it up and you just brush. Now, if I'm going to be surprised if I find that this spins like I like, but never know. That's why I'm doing this. I'm going to put a little bit more since it's so short. A thicker bat would be helpful. More fiber to roll into that roll log bat. Boy, that's black looking. I'll tell you, that is, that is the hardest part of all of this black Welsh, or black Welsh Mountain Herdwick, uh, which is a very dark gray. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> I did get dust up my throat there. Uh, uh, what was the other one? It starts with a... H. Anyway, it's also, it was black. It was a dual coated. Uh, Zwarbles. Actually, Zwarbles is pretty nice. It, if you're going to look for a black fiber, Zwarbles, and it is spelled with a Z um, and does have a W in it. <laughs> anyway, that's a pretty good black fiber to look for if you're interested in um, black fiber. And I'm looking at the, what's left there, and I'm just thinking, I don't think I'm going to drum card it on my drum carter because I don't think there's enough there. I'm only drum carding once, uh, maybe. Uh, first one did pretty good, but I, this one didn't, so let me do this one again. More than likely, I'll sit here and watch something and drum card or uh, hand card these and get them cleared up that way but I am gonna only spin these for my sample should I go for three this is really weird I mean it's just like one great big clump of fiber sheet sheet of fiber. There's your top with your locks and this is the cut side with all that short stuff, all that. This feels pretty soft when you feel it. It's good and clean. It doesn't have lanolin uh, on it. Tends to be low lanolin anyway, you know. So I'll just take this little bit and spin these two. And yeah, there's a little bit of white on top there from the cards. I don't know if I can really worry about that. Okay. This is... Oh, how quick I forget. I'm writing this down on my stream notes. Balwin, 15 grams. Okay. Oh, 
much time do I have here? Oh, I have a lot of time. I have 45 minutes. All right, I have a choice of finishing that up or doing a third one. Um, I'm going to do a third one because I have it partially uh, prepped already. If I was just working it on my own here, you know, not streaming, I would, of course, finish it up. Not put it off. I don't know how this is going to spin at all. I just don't have a clue. I don't really want... Okay, first of all, I need to slow it down a lot. Take the pull in off. And... What I'm doing is a very short drafted semi woolen. So there's very little room right at that drafting triangle. This makes the yarn very thick, all right? So I'm going to get a very thick single. But I'm getting a pretty consistent, smooth single, um, except for that particular part right there which had a whole bunch of shortcut all right so it's got to be controlled it's not a quick and easy spin um, you keep the there's a lot of fiber in that bat and I am pulling a, a lot of fiber out at this at the drafting triangle from the bat because that helps put all of those very short fibers all together and that you're going to get a lot of fibers and so you have a thicker single but you have a pretty consistent single if you try to thin it out it will work for a little bit but like i just did but the problem is it really is bumpy you've got you don't have a smooth yarn anymore when you go thinner. So I think that should make a little sense anyway. And I just did that off stream, but I got it. I mean, off camera, but I got another one. So I'll show you because I just did one here. Don't go faster. Go turn off. So I explained it. So now I'll show you. So this is this is what was left over on the other card. Oh, not fast enough. So it's not a true bat, but it's still I'm keeping that fiber supply pretty thick right down here. Watch down in there as I pull out, especially as I get into this bat. And this isn't pulling in. I need it to pull in more. See right there where my hand thumb is? I'm pulling out of that fiber supply and I'm keeping that fiber supply pretty thick. That is making it really pretty smooth yarn, even though thick. Some people say they can't spin thick. And this is a pretty good example. It's not the best fiber to be using for anything that's thick but you know I spun a lot of Black Welsh Mountain and it's all thick for this exact reason I needed to keep a 
pretty hefty fiber supply going into the single that makes it thick because there are so many short fibers in there. This is where you get into your breed studies and you understand what um, you understand what you have to do to get a yarn if you are given or receive or buy or whatever or raise this breed of sheep. Even if you're not a spinner and you're raising this breed of sheep, you need to kind of know what spinners are going to do. And if you have spinner approach you because they don't know what to do with it, it helps if you have a little bit of an idea. I'm such an advocate of breed studies. I have been for years. It all started with the rare breeds, but, you know, I am. I'm just a big advocate of it. All right. So, let's see here. I have two singles. And for once, my plying leader is the same color as what I'm plying. Usually, it's the other way. It almost looks exactly like my leader. My leader is actually a commercial yarn. <laughs> All right. Quickly done. Not much fiber. Boy, I got neat and put my scissors back in my pencil thing. There we go. Oh, I know why, because I was writing on my notes. So past the beginning part here and this is going to be probably eight wraps per inch somewhere in there one two three four five six 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 wraps per inch definitely bulky like I said often happens. So, um, whoop, there it is. Boy, I almost couldn't, almost cut my leader. Yeah, I don't need to put a whole big twist in there. And I will hang on to this and finish this up. For my ornament. This can be sheep noses. One stitch and you got a sheep nose. <laughs> All right, let me finish my notes. Um, needs Thick bats, thick drafting zone. The carded was six reps per inch. That's Balwin, Balwin, Ball, whatever. Balwin, Balwin is how I want to say it. I don't know what's right. I didn't take the time to look it up. 
I need to save some fiber. It's a good thing I didn't spend it all. Yeah, good thing. Okay. Fiber. Twist. Info card, and that's it. Another one done. No, almost done. Oh well. What are we going to do next? Let me clean up here. Goodness. That was dirty. That was dusty. White puffy fiber. Comb or carded bats. Let me get this on here. Start of the info packet here. This is Badger Face. So let me get that on my link. That one, it's a really, it almost looks like a horse. <laughs> what if I, but anyway, the typical picture is so cute. It's got a face where it's white and then it's outlined with black, black ears, a little black cap. It's got black feet and black underbelly. It is a cool looking sheep. All right, so let me copy this and put this up here. You'll have to take a look at it. Oops, that didn't work. There we go. Again, this is from Witchwood Spinner. Same thing. And as I said, I've already carded three bats, so I am going to go ahead and spin those. It's kind of a good thing I did that because the last two are white and my I really need to clean those cards out good of the black or it'll be in there, you know. So actually, it's, this, this worked out like I planned it. And of course, I didn't plan it <laughs> at all. <laughs> I am going to spin these carded bats. There's three of them. So I'll do one and a half per single. Get the camera on my Roberta. All right, so some of the notes that I made while I was working with it, and by the way, I think you need to see this. It's long locked. It's not as open crimped. It's a little tighter crimp than um, the um, Beulah. This is soft. It was clean and it's got a little more bounce to it. And I said on my notes, and okay, I was saying that I thought the locks were too long for the hand cards. I found out that I really was wrong. It did card nice bats better than I expected. So that means that it's, you know, going to be a good one that can be carded or combed. I am going to try the semi-worsted 
and it's spinning very nice. It's got a little bit of, uh, it's got a lot of fuzziness, but it's got a little bit of thicker and thinner to it. But with those longer locks, you're going to have um, the worsted working well because you can draw out from your bat and spin it just like I'm doing. When you draw it out and the twist runs up there, it just magically smooths out. This is really nice. It is spinning the semi-woolen really nice. One of the reasons I don't spin woolen, you know, not semi-woolen, but woolen, true long draw woolen, is because my Roberta is not the correct spinning wheel for that. It pulls in too hard. You don't want, you want a wheel that's barely uh, pulling against that fiber when you long draw it because you want to pull all the way back and allow the wheel to spin and spin and spin to add twist all the way back and then then you say okay here you can have this single and you let it wind on right so it can't be set up to do as much of a pull-in as this Roberta automatically does because it's a bobbin driven spinning wheel I it I just can't make it not pull in it's a physical impossibility because it's directly tied to the bobbin is directly tied to the speed and the only thing I can do is turn the speed way down and then I don't get enough twist so you know that's my solution is to do the semi woolen where I have a relatively long space drafting area for the twist to run down and I'm pulling back here by my uh, side you know my hip but I'm not really doing the traditional long draw no, oh, hubby just made another pot of coffee and I could smell it. Oh, that smells so good. <laughs> good, I'll have coffee when I get done. I have few addictions, but coffee is just, I just live for coffee. Fortunately, I drink it black and don't have a lot of calories with it, but or none really which is good you wouldn't know it looking at me but it's true I drink my coffee black so this is the second bat and a half and I totally started that wrong I didn't pre-draft anything out we're connecting to it. I was going to take the whole bat right then and there, which, or half a bat, which is not what I wanted it to do. I do know that this Tuesday morning it's not a good time for people to come and watch on a live stream I totally get it people work people have kids they're in school they're homeschooling whatever I, I get that I'm doing it for my sake my convenience um, but I really encourage you to go and check these Tuesday teachings out after you know, if you got a little time and you want to sit and watch something nobody's streaming that you're interested in, um, watch them. If you're interested in learning things about spinning, I am packing so much information into these Tuesday teaching streams because this is how I teach best. I talk about what is in my hand and what I'm doing right then and there. I don't make lesson plans you know I don't have uh, bullet points I'm not that kind of teacher I'm ex good at explaining though and that's exactly what's happening here is I'm explaining you know why am I doing it this way how am I doing it and that sort of thing and 
even I'm, I mean I'm not trying to break I am so happy with this style of teaching um, over the podcast that I did for years and I'm you know struggling to get more podcasts out for this reason I'm putting so much time into the live stream but it's so much better because when I was doing the podcast I did pretty much have a lesson plan or notes or you know a list of what I've done and this is what I've done and and you know what I thought of it kind of thing it wasn't very relaxed and natural and it certainly wasn't like the concept that I really wanted for my name which is yarn spinners tales I'm talking about spinning okay I have a little bit of junk on the end here. I'm just going to pitch that. I like this. It's very soft. It's very bouncy in my hands. You know, that drafting. Um, it's not um, It's not that super bouncy, but it has life to it. Oh, it feels, it feels good. It really does. It feels really good to spin this. It's soft enough that I'm not like, ooh prickly. It's very soft. Whoops, wrong end. So we're going to apply this, this carded single of Badger Face. And I still have the black on here. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Come back out. What this always makes me think of and realize is it is so nice to find a sheep that one can be pastured in areas that maybe aren't real good for some of the finicky sheep. Two uh, will breed and provide marketable attributes in lamb and meat and that sort of thing, and has a decent wool. And it isn't necessarily that the um, it's going to the spinners, right? It can, but the real truth is it's going into, if they're sharing, it's going into the wool pool, and we're improving that itch of wool that people don't like. We are getting wool that's better and more wearable, and especially next to the skin, but definitely, you know, for outerwear and that sort of thing. By per putting this kind of thing, this kind of wool into the wool pool, and that's my opinion. That's just totally my opinion because really I don't think um, sheep breeders really breed for that reason. Um, they obviously, the other characteristics are much, much more important. You, you want an animal that's hardy. You want an animal that you know will be productive and provide income and that sort of thing. So oh, I have quite a bit left here. Let me finish this up yeah not that much did pretty good on my splitting of it oh get it off my thumb first <laughs> And it's not going anywhere when it was on my thumb. All right, there we go. This is whiter. It's, you know, it doesn't turn that kind of off-white that we were seeing in the previous one. 
Ooh, I like that. I like it. It's just a very basic, bouncy, make me into a hat. I'm warm. I'm soft. I'm cuddly. Give me something to cuddle you with, right? <laughs> All right. So here we'll write down carded. And I'll count the wraps per inch. Ten. Ten wraps per inch. Oh, that is so fuzzy. It is, it just looks like, you know, what uh, true wool should look like from a happy sheep. What did I say? Ten wraps per inch. Okay. Now. Oh, I got in here. I got the name in there already. I need a twist. And I need a tag for the ball. your face carded and I'll use that other one for attaching to the twist Ooh, I'm gonna like knitting with this is the kind of hand spun I love to knit with takes it's harder to find the projects you know it's it's bulky it's not your sock weight it's not even it's worsted weight to but it really is what it is add your face carded All right, let me make a hole in here. I do miss the music during the Tuesday teachings, but I purposely do not. And I have talked about it every single Tuesday, but I don't because um, I upload these to YouTube and YouTube will um, claim the copyright on it. Pretzel is Twitch safe, but not YouTube safe. I don't want anybody claiming the copyright on my teaching. Okay. Voila. A carded twist. I'll leave that out. That's so pretty. I'm going to leave it out for a little bit. Now I have to comb, and I left a lot of it to comb. Huh, I may change my mind. <laughs> I keep changing my mind. But truly, I left a lot of it to comb because I didn't think it would card well. I mean, I, I, it, to begin with, when I was separating everything, I was like, okay, I'm going to need to do the locks. There's a few locks here, and I'll do... Uh, some top. So, you know, I was like separating it all out to do the top. Of course, it may be really, really nice as top, too. I mean, as a 
uh, worsted weight, which was my first instinct. It might be interesting to see if my first instinct was right. notice I hold on to the lock real tight in the middle and pull against that when I am and I can see you know when I'm doing it I can see whether I got everything because then it's clear if I have gotten everything sometimes it goes right through first time and it's usually the tips. The cut ends usually have things that are in the way down there. Little shortcuts. And I'm getting static bad. Okay, so it's not sticky at all, <clears throat> which is part of why it has a good feel to it, too. I'm feeling, I'm, I'm really feeling the fiber, but it isn't overwashed so that it's dead and dry. It's just washed perfect. And that is hit and miss. I mean, if you wash your fiber the same way all the time, you're not always going to be washing the way it needs to be washed, right? You may overwash it and make it too dry. I talked about that in another stream with the Texel. Okay, there's the locks. Now let me do a some card or comb with the comb. See how that pulls off. To me, if if this spins nice and I really like the yarn, I would say, okay, it gets the gold star for today. It's the perfect breed of this Welsh breed experience pack. I may have said that about some of the others I did earlier in the 52 weeks of sheep but this one as far as today is the star it's the star even if the picture of one of the sheeps did look like it was a horse <laughs> it was it was like I am a ram <laughs> It was even standing like it was like, I dare you. <laughs> All right, I'm combing this back the other way. I, there's a lot of fiber on here. There was still some uh, shortcuts in there. I felt like it needed that. But it also is transferring completely to the one comb. So I will not pull top from both, just the one. And what, unfortunately, is on there, I will pitch. I'm not going to put that in any of my yarn. Neps happen. Right? Oh, that pulls off nice. Look at that. Just slides out. There is a silky feel to this. I mean, it could be just the fact that it's that perfect clean, but the other part of it is it's just got maybe enough of that long wool genetics which is traditionally silky like Lincoln and that sort of thing you have just enough in there that it has that silkiness this should spin thinner all right bottom line is Makes good top. Likes combing. 
And I, I said at one point I would like to have, uh, you know, make a list of what card's good and what comes good. But some of them, they, they belong both, you know. And maybe that's my top ten breeds or something like that, right? <laughs> the card and comb both. That's a good way to look at it. Going back the other way. You notice that I do flip the comb up and down, getting off as much as I can since it is transferring. Look at that pretty top. That is so pretty. Not a nub in sight. There's a little vegetable matter right there. I didn't put as much on the comb this time, that time. And this is going to be even less. But we have decided to comb it all. That was left. Yeah, there's hardly any on there. So it'll go with that one. Actually, looks like I'm going to be spinning all the top on one and all the comb blocks on the other single. That's what it looks like. And I'd be rich if I had a dollar for every time I said on a podcast, I love spinning top. <laughs> I'd be rich. I'd be rich because I love spinning top. Answer the phone, hubby. <laughs> he must be outside. We have sunshine today. He's probably out doing something. All right, my wastebasket. Good thing you can't see it, although I see a little bit on the floor down there that it's missed. It is overflowing, and it wasn't all that full when I started. All right. I'm going to put these together because I am done with them for today. I'm not going to do the fourth one. I'm thrilled to get three done. That's not bad. And... I'm going to write my note here real quick. Combed top. Very nice. Silky. And one single each. All right, last little bit of spin in here. Okay, we'll start with the locks. See how good my eyeball is. If <laughs> I really divided this in half, probably not. Rarely do. This is whoa hard. Oh, I didn't get it started right. I it was like. Super, super thin. That wouldn't have held. This is like spinning. Ooh, doesn't want to draft real well. I was just going to say it's like spinning any other lock. 
Ah, that was just getting started, I think. There we go. Oh, let me get the... There we go, so you can see. Yep. Very smooth. Pinch and pull. Very slick. Thin. Single. I am having some trouble with the static. Um, it's the only one I've had trouble with so far today. It's not uncommon when you are dealing with fiber in the wintertime, washed fiber. There is a spinning oil. Some people do use spinning oils regularly and, you know, I'm not fond of them. But it's certainly something you can do to help control the static. It's not really going to help if you wash your fiber and put anything in. Like, I, you really, I, I never put um, sh uh, cream conditioner on wool. Um, I have on alpaca, but not wool. Because you want that fiber as clean as you can get it so you know that it's clean, that you have the lanolin off when it dries. And if you put something else on there, you're not sure if it's what you put on there or lanolin. And the second reason is really if you want to control static, you need to put it on right as you're processing it. So that's the, re the theory behind the spinning oil as opposed to putting it on a washed fiber or on the fiber after you wash it. No, I may not have judged this, and I don't feel like I have enough of the locks. I'll just ply back the whatever's extra. Now, there is white Kemp in here. I can see it. It's not long. It really isn't prickling out. It's not real often. But let's just say that each of these locks, I've seen one little piece as I spin. And it's you can tell it because it's thicker. It's wider. <laughs> if it could be wider, but it is. And so it's real obvious. You can see it. It's just that it isn't affecting the softness of the fiber. There's not that much of it, and there's plenty of long fiber. You don't have the short stuff like I did in that black fiber to make it nice and soft. I'm going to take this a little bit off on the end and let it go in. I have talked more this class than I have in quite a while. And I didn't really say that into the mic, but I can tell. I, I talked the whole class. I can tell. At two hours. A lot of times, like, especially on Sunday, nobody comes by. Nobody chats. I hardly say anything. I'm, I'll say things every once in a while, you know, as I think of them. But I hardly talk. 
All right, let's see how this top does. Should be glorious to spin, and it is. Yes, it is. If I was self-plying it back, I would go for super thin. But since I already know that the lock is probably about 13, 14 wraps per inch after I ply it, I'm not going for the super thin here. I'm matching what I'm, I know the lock is. So it applies evenly. That's delightful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Oh, I was going to show you a piece of Kemp and I dropped it. Oh well. Never mind. Kind of hard to join. It is. It's a little slick, and I, I just got a thicker join than I wanted. The, when you're joining it, the idea is to stretch it out and twist it into the twist as you're progressing down the single. Sometimes what happens is instead is that fiber that you have um, presenting to that single wraps like a core spun yarn you know it wraps around it instead of stretching out and going down it and that makes a thicker join Oh my gosh, this is good. Oh, this is delightful. <laughs> I just hit my first little nub right there, a bump. I shouldn't even have gone through the top, but it does sometimes. It does. And since I'm stopped, I'll change my hook. Well, I have hit my two hours. I will go ahead and ply this, show it to you, and then call it an end of a stream. I will be back Thursday evening. I am on Eastern Standard Time. It is currently just after 1 p.m. my time. I know that that doesn't help you if you're watching this as video on demand. So check out my page on Twitch, my channel, check out schedule, it's on there, check out uh, following, you'll get notification, and you won't miss anything. Thursday evening, 7 p.m. for two hours, and we're going to be doing a non-spinning thing. Thursdays are what I call throwback Thursdays. I loved what I'm doing. I have had a ball. Some of it has been, it's all involving very old patterns. And some of the not well known types of crafts. And last Thursday I did a Battenberg lace and I had so much fun with it. I have one more ornament that I can make from the kit that I took it from. And so I am going to do that this Thursday. I'm also on Sunday afternoons, and that is spin all the things. <laughs> I just spin <laughs> and chat, and I love it when people come to chat. All right, that's the end of my wonderful top. Oh, yes, it looks like there's so much more of that than the... Should I self-ply these? I don't really want to do plying balls. Hmm. Don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess 
guess I shouldn't deviate from my system here. It's been working good. It's just... Okay. It cards well, but if you really want a nice... This looks like you could get a sock yarn. You know, a sock weight yarn. I wouldn't go so far as maybe a lace weight. But, you know... Um, sock weight. A lot, a lot of shawls are made out of sock weight, so... Oh, I'm pretty sure if you had top, you would be able to get a nice thin yarn. I learned from my last one. I needed more speed. It was underplied. Not the black one. The last white one. The Beulah. The top. Not the carded, but the top was underplied. And this, I could see, was going to be the same way. Nice yarn. Oh. <laughs> now the odds of me or you here in the United States getting a whole fleece of this, it, it's not likely. I did not actually look to see and the fact that Oklahoma State has it on their list might mean that there are breeders maybe in areas so you know it's possible. When I do these breed studies I'm always saying that you never know what you're going to find local to you and it's important to have all this breed study so that if you do find something that is it the normal run-of-the-mill, um, you know, breed? You've had somebody who's had a little bit of experience with it and can tell you what it's like. Lots left over. Not lots, but I knew there'd be a fair amount here. Actually... Yeah. Let's see if I can make a better join here. Yeah, I still have a little bit of a... Whoops. I also got it stuck on my fingers. My ring. Come down here. <clears throat> there we go. You see it on my fingers? That's how I do a leftover single. Just wrap it around my fingers and flip it back and forth and work it so it comes off. Don't need to mess with it. that Andean plying. It's just a modified Andean ply. Okay, so here we go. Let me get past the join. Just a fair amount. Oh, that's it's soft. It's really nice. And there's your yarn. Looks bit. It looks thick, but it's not. Now let me me measure the reps per inch here. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
12, 13, 13, 13 and a half, 13, 14. We'll go with 13. So that is gorgeous yarn. And I had a great time making this, talking to you, telling you all about it, teaching. And I got three more done out of what I have to get done. So thank you for letting me do that. And I hope that I see you in other streams. Until later. Happy spinning.